Hello and welcome to What You Need to Know. It is Tuesday evening, uh, most of where America is watching us. Uh, I am Sybil Wilkes and of the What You Need to Know newsletter. And it is a, uh, a, a the conclusion of a month full of great conversation with some incredible women, all members of Sisters United for Reform. Uh, each Tuesday of this month, we've had a panel discussion uh, we started out the beginning of October uh, talking about COVID-19, the impact on domestic violence and mental health support. Uh, we also talked with members of Sisters United for Reform on the second Tuesday about the power of the sisterhood. That was a great time as well. Also, very interesting and engaging conversation last Tuesday uh, and the conversation about police reform and combating systemic racism. Uh, that is a topic that never goes away as, as we are looking at the headlines today. And another topic that is ongoing in this month of October as we are one week away from the conclusion of this election season. Uh, not just election day, but uh, the conclusion of the season as we have over 60 million people who have already voted early in this election. We are talking about voter mobilization, education and engagement. And uh, my panelists today are uh, just that, engaging women, uh, very, very smart women and uh, having uh, an opportunity to talk to them is great. So let us uh, first, without uh, um, further ado, let us give thanks to Cheryl Proctor Rogers of A Step Ahead Consulting uh, and uh, Public Relations and Coaching. She has uh, just been invaluable in putting us together and uh, making this happen. So thank you so much, Cheryl, for all of your support, all of your guidance. And uh, and of course, I thank these ladies uh, for their time as we have uh, had uh, an incredible opportunity for sisterhood and fellowship over this past month of Tuesdays. First of all, let me welcome Margaret Gaines Clark, the 37th national president of the Girlfriends, she was reelected for a second term in May of this year. And for nearly 20 years, she has provided in-depth professional consultation on long-term care education, plan design, and product plan comparisons as a part of her specialization in the insurance industry. Girlfriends Incorporated is one of the oldest and most highly respected social organizations of African-American women in this country. It was founded in 1927 in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance. The organization has grown to encompass over 1,800 women in 48 chapters from coast to coast. The girlfriends uh, are there uh, as a part of their founding vision to foster friendship, but also established a separate arm, the Girlfriends Fund, a scholarship program. And since the inception, their chapters support a wide variety of local community efforts in each of their 48 locations. Secondly, uh, we welcome Virginia Harris, is currently the president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, reelected for a second term as well in October of last year. And she retired from the Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners in July of 2006 as a county auditor after 20 years of service. And uh, she has uh, served in a number of positions. And it's just a shame you, shame you couldn't hold on to a job there, um, President Harris, because you have really run the gamut uh, from uh, accounting director and financial management analyst in Gwinnett County, as well as uh, an audit manager for the state of Georgia, controller, and uh, also working for the state of Louisiana and Sears Roebuck and Company, one of my favorites there uh, in the Southeastern Regional Office and Accountant with Arthur Young and Company as well. And uh, talking about the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Women is a 39-year-old advocacy nonprofit organization whose mission is to advocate on behalf of black women and girls to promote leadership, development, and gender equity in the areas of health, education, and economic empowerment. The organization was launched. We have an anniversary here, October 24th of 1981, represented us from 14 states and the District of Columbia and selected Jewel Jackson McCabe as the first national president. And finally, uh, let us welcome back Melanie Campbell, the president and CEO of the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation, uh, convener, Black Women's Roundtable. Uh, she's recognized as one of the hardest working 
servant leaders in today's civil rights, women's rights, and social, social justice movement. Recently celebrating 25 years of service with the National Coalition and serving as an advisor to U.S. presidents, congressional members, corporate, labor, nonprofit executives, philanthropists, faith leaders, and others on critical issues impacting Black America. And yes, you are still standing, proudly. <laughs> I can't speak for anyone else, but I'm giving you the cake. <laughs> uh, the Black women's uh, agenda is uh, devoted to advancing, securing, and protecting the rights of women. Members continuously strive to acquire greater understanding and cooperation with issues that affect all women and their families while searching for new knowledge and new conceptualizations about said problems. And through the establishment of social priorities, an agenda, the uh, BWA facilitates discussions that lead to effective policies and meaningful change. Ladies, just uh, talking about uh, your, or your, yourselves as well as the organizations that you represent and um, Sisters United for Reform, uh, you are all a part of this, 13 women of the largest organizations that are devoted to uh, women and young women and girls as well, uh, including the historically black sororities. Um, Sisters United for Reform came together this year and uh, already uh, creating a, a mighty path as we go through this election season. Um, let us talk, uh, Melanie, uh, we, we talked a, a little bit off the air as, as we were talking about what's going on in the news. And I know we're talking about uh, voter mobilization, education and engagement, but certainly this uh, is a part of the discussion. Uh, and especially as we talked about it last week, but let's talk about what happened in Philadelphia yesterday and how it relates to uh, a lot of the, uh, the conversations that we're having. Um, for people that don't know, a young man uh, who his family has had, had established uh, is one who dealt with mental issues and was on medication, uh, was on his uh, in neighborhood street Monday afternoon. Uh, his family called 911 hoping for an ambulance to come to help them and instead police were sent. Uh, he was walking down the street with a knife. His mother tried to grab him and to hold him back. Uh, he broke away and the police uh, said that they told him to drop his knife and then uh, they opened fire when he did not. As he was approaching them, uh, he did not drop his knife. According to the police reports, they shot several times and he was killed. Uh, 27 years old, this young man. And then, of course, um, there were demonstrations last night into this morning. And I understand that this evening, uh, the uh, National Guard has call, been called out uh, to stand guard in, in the area of Philadelphia uh, starting tonight. Uh, would you like to talk about this and, and give us uh, something from your perspective, Melanie? Well, First of all, you know, we have to just stop and pause and just feel for the, for mm -hmm. his his mother, his family. Mm -hmm. um, I um, spoke to uh, I saw the the raw video, you know, mm -hmm. that's out there, like everyone else. So first, it was shock and just just the the the, this, uh, um, the trauma that continues yeah. to happen uh, to our community. So so that was the first response, and I talked to our leaders in. Philadelphia, and there's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of a lot of angst, concern about what's going to happen tonight. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia is just two white. From what I could what I could see and understand is two white officers, who from everything you could see, just why they had to just they didn't they didn't try to de-escalate right the situation. They just shot yeah. right? right, and so here we are, um, six days, seven days from the election. Philadelphia is very very critical to the outcomes and being able to, for them, to, what our folks are trying to figure out is how to to to, to address the immediate uh, situation yeah. and also knowing that part of the solution is what has to happen uh, over these next few days uh, in Philadelphia that has early voting going on and the election day itself. And uh, so goes Philadelphia, so goes Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, so the, and so that's, uh, a, a major concern in the midst of also uh, lifting up the families. I do want to make one little correction. Uh, Gwen Hess uh, is over the Black Women's Agenda, and so I want to make sure that we lift up her. Oh, as they I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. 
But I just, because I, you know, I just want to lift up her work, and she's a part of our our, our coalition. Okay. Um, Black Women Roundtable is. is <laughs> you know, make sure I don't take credit for what's not mine, right? <laughs> we all in, we all in sisterhood together, and so lifting each other up, and just wanted to make sure I lifted her up in that in mm. that in that way. Yes, but yeah. So and the, and look, justice is on the ballot. That's part of why. Yeah. So it's one of the main issues. We did this essence be able to be able to poll that we just released two weeks, not quite two weeks ago, and racism, hate crimes, criminal justice, policing reform are right at the top across generations. So we know that that this election uh, will help us address this, and there is clear distinction between the candidates, just mm -hmm. nonpartisanly speaking, uh, when you look at their platforms around these issues. And 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 Sybil, you may recall the whole reason why our coalition yes. got together was because of what was happening in our country during the uh, early spring. And mm -hmm. uh, Sister Glenda Glover, you know, called 13 of us to say, hey, we mm -hmm. need to yeah. unite and join uh, this fight because police reform, racism um, is here, has always been here, but it's exposed. And I'm sure the pandemic has allowed it to uncover itself. Uh, but we're five million strong, and uh, this issue is going to be addressed. Yeah, and and, and so President uh, Harris, uh, your thoughts on this as well, and 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 how you all have come together, and and what you have done thus far uh, as a part of the coalition. Well, we started in June um, to issue our first demand for reform, which is a call to action on ten. Um, issues and one of those was police reform, uh, reform to uh, a candid conversation about race and systemic racism in our country. Uh, our group came together and wrote an open letter to Governor George um, Brian Kemp in the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. calling him out on attacking the mayor, Atlanta Keisha Lance Bottom, and each of the 13 presidents signed the open letter. Uh, when Senator Kamala Harris was uh, selected by Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden, the coalition issued a statement of support in that nomination. And when the attacks was uh, blatantly uh, disrespect was continuing to happen with her, we all submitted an open letter on October the 9th um, to show that we were behind her, that we had her back. So uh, many of our sister president answered the call and will support um, uh, President Brown tomorrow on her hosting uh, a panel of discussion. She is the president of Jack and Jill. Mm -hmm. So we have been working together since we came together in the month of May. And our first press release was in June of 2009. And so, President Campbell, let's talk about the uh, Sisters United for Reform and their message to the members and to all women, all the women that are that are, are watching us today, and, and men uh, and their children watching us today, and the message from Sisters United for Reform. Well, uh, thank you, Sister Sybil, and uh, uh, we, uh, don't let off the gas. Mm. We have seven days, and mm -hmm. less than that, you know, uh, polls are closed, post them for the day. We have six days mm -hmm. uh, and we have, and it's been exciting to see all the long lines, uh, but we have to have long lines all the way through election day mm -hmm. um, because there's some folks who haven't voted yet. And so we got to get everybody out. Yes. And so every, all of our organizations individually, collectively are working together in coalition to really continue to push for the get out the vote and voter, and voter protection and to deal with uh, voter suppression that is is running rapid uh, in in a way that I've never experienced in all of these twenty five plus years I've been doing this work uh, because you have it not just coming from the White House from the president doing things from governors uh, uh, passing uh, you know you know Texas is is the, is is the most egregious one I believe in some mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. when you talk about people especially during a pandemic where you need people to be able to drop off a ballot but you only have one one uh, mm -hmm. drop box in a county in Texas. Right. right, you can ride a hundred miles, right? It'll right? be in the same county. Right. So who are they going? In Michigan, what are they doing? I'm making it harder for you. You know how we do, y'all. We, we we drive people to, to the polls. The churches okay. bring the folks to the polls. Mm -hmm. They 
at, they, they've got something going on in Texas, well, they, in, in Michigan, where you, you know, churches can't use their vans. If you don't own the van, you can't drive them. That's buying a vote. So it's all kind of things going on. But we're not going to let them stop us. Susan Taylor says it all, uh, not on our watch. We <laughs> right. the state. So exactly. we're through. We are pushing for uh, uh, some of the things that are going on with the Voting Rights Act, still pushing the Congress, right, to do the right thing. They, The Senate has has uh, adjourned, unfortunately, uh, for the election season. So we know right back after the third, when they come back, and we're going to keep pushing during lame up those things that need to be passed. George Floyd uh, uh, Policing Reform Act is one of those things that needs to be passed, especially in light of what we just saw happen again in Philadelphia with the unjust killing of an, another Black body in this country. And, and think about the voter suppression that has come down from the Supreme Court just in the last couple of days uh, of, of this court before they even had their ninth member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> and that, you know, so uh, it's ongoing. And, and as you say, you know, you can't take your foot off the gas and, and it is exhausting. It is tiring. And, and but it is so necessary. Mm -hmm. And think about all the people in their lives that they gave. Uh, to to make this happen for us, for us to get to this point, so right. we can't. It, it would just be. It, it wouldn't only be remiss on our parts. It would right. just be the biggest disappointment of our lives mm -hmm. if we did not live up to the promise that has been given us. So the opportunities and and to continue that fight because it is ongoing, right? right. Absolutely, absolutely. We are talking to Sisters United for Reform, uh, four, uh, three members of this uh, uh, August organization, uh, talking about voter mobilization, education, and engagement. And as we have uh, noted and welcomed them, Margaret Gaines Clark, the national president of the Girlfriends Incorporated, Melanie Campbell, president and CEO of Black Women's Roundtable, and Virginia Harris, president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. and. Um, we are talking about voter mobilization, education, and engagement, and uh, talking about voter suppression, the tactics that go way back in the era of Reconstruction, <laughs> from Crow Laws, a couple of years before my time. In what ways uh, do you see voter suppression being carried out today? We talked a little bit about that, but if, if each of you could talk about some examples, and, and let's start with you, President Gaines Clark, about some examples of voter suppression that has come across your, your table. Absolutely. Um, and it, it is so unfortunate. Still in 2020, we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they do it via the law. I mean, there are over 36 states uh, that have ID requirements for the poll. If you don't know that and you show up, your vote will not be cast. Mm -hmm. And just think about the individuals who may not have any type of government ID, whether it is a passport or a license. And especially as you get um, in, you know, in a city where folks may not have a car, so they don't have the license, they'll take public transportation. But it is clear that this uh, voter suppression is there. Uh, also, um, looking at just the recent laws that the courts have passed. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that Pennsylvania did throw out the one that they were going to say that the local uh, board had the opportunity to mm -hmm. determine if the signature didn't look like the signature on the book, they could just toss it out. Right. Not a, you know, a uh, handwriting a specialist, just somebody at the board uh, could make that decision and that was turned down. And then on the opposite side, just trying to get our people mobilized to vote and knowing that our mail is not uh, at the same level that we would wish. Right. And so, uh, you know, with Wisconsin saying, well, no, you know, we're not accepting anything after the third. So, I mean, we clearly see all the things uh, that are out there. And I mean, I'm still flabbergasted at the state of California having unofficial ballot boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The place where the normal one is supposed to be. So this tells us how important our vote is because now they're coming out the woodworks of all type of areas and ways of trying to suppress our vote. And President Harris, what about you? Uh, surely uh, the examples of voter suppression continue go on and on. Yeah, uh, Sybil, thank you for that question. Voter purging 
uh, because mm -hmm. many people move, die, or become ineligible to vote for other reasons. The voter rolls up uh, uh, need to be purged. According to ACLU, sometimes state use this process as a disenchantment, uh, as a method for disenfranchising uh, mm -hmm. voters. So uh, a single purge sometimes can stop hundreds of people and thousands from voting. Mm -hmm. And often voters learn that they've been purged when they show up at the poll to vote. Mm -hmm. Felony disenchantment. A felony conviction can result in losing your right to vote. And different states have different laws. Some ban only doing the time the person is incarcerated. Others mm -hmm. ban for life. And then there are some people who ban voting when they're on probation. And some states don't disenfranchise people with felony conviction at all. Well, this makes it so confusing. And of course, due to racial biases in our criminal justice system, African-American are disproportionately affected. Yeah, it really is. And Melanie Campbell, what about you? And in terms of, uh, uh, I know that you, I uh, see it every day, and, and we talked a little bit about it, but uh, any other examples? Well, you know, you mentioned the Supreme Court, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, first time I've seen someone, and this is just no disparaging, just facts, very unqualified person has been given a lifetime uh, appointment mm -hmm. on, in the um, highest law in the land. Yeah. So 2013, uh, we're still... Yeah. Uh, being impacted by the Shelby versus Holder decision, Shelby, Alabama decision, that really gutted the Voting Rights Act's mm -hmm. ability to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. And so here we are, seven years later, still having uh, the impact. So some a lot of these things that we're seeing, uh, the happening that states are able to do. And yeah. so so that law so is, is probably purging, uh, as an example. We know Stacey Abrams would be governor of Georgia. Had it not been for the purging of uh, of of hundreds of thousands of, of voters in the state of, of Georgia, and had had there been the strength of the Voting Rights Act, could have stopped that mm -hmm. from happening. Uh, as another example, um, and so um, and then uh, we talked about Texas, right? We talked. Yeah. About uh, yeah. uh, but, but another quick example is Michigan again, where yeah. they uh, we 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 partnered with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. Uh, reached out and asked us to file a lawsuit because I know some of you may or may not, audience may or may not have heard about folks doing these robocalls and telling people that you know, if you vote, you know, the, your name is going to be turned over. It's going to lock you up for child support, this, that, and the other. All yeah. kinds of so trying to push back on some of those uh, tactics that are taking place. Um, so it's not just the South, you know, it's right. called up South in a lot of places, right? Uh, some of these things that are happening, they're happening across the country, especially in black and brown communities. And, and just just in terms of, uh, in, I believe it's California, but I think I heard somewhere else uh, most recently uh, with burning the the ballots that are in these boxes. Mm -hmm. It's just it, mm -hmm. they locked up some people in Pennsylvania, yeah. in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, yeah. who work for the Postal Service, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's it, it, it's um. It's, it's one for the record books. It surely is. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm exhausted. I can't imagine how you all are, are still standing uh, in the wake of all of this, but it, it is so necessary that we- I think get, working in coalition, civil oh, really yes, exactly. working together. Yeah. Yeah, working together so it's not on, and sharing and, and, and you know, finding out, hey, what's going on here and there and just being able to work together. We're right. stronger together. Absolutely. Exactly. And the change is going to come. A Amen. <laughs> and, we're all Amen. Still, and our Amen. message is still the same. It is very consistent, our message across the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, President Campbell, recently quoted as saying, we are in a state of emergency from being counted fairly in the 2020 census to surviving COVID-19 and living lives without fear of being unjustly killed by police or white supremacists. There is much that is adversely impacting our community's ability to vote and without barriers. How do we overcome these barriers? Well, vote. <laughs> vote, yeah. vote, vote. Yeah. Uh, the most, most powerful tool we have is to maximize that impact. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and and as black women, we're that secret sauce. We get, you know, the, our not just ourselves, but we're leading. You know, we we are influencing our families, our communities, um, and and going block by block. Don't leave anybody uh, behind. And simultaneously, we have to fight the suppression uh, as best we can right. and expose it and and uproot it. And the only way we can uproot it is elect up and down that ticket, not just the president, mm-hmm. the president. Yeah. exactly. So who will be in that U.S. Senate? Who's going to be in the Congress? And of course, the local races affect us our day to day as well. Um, so it, 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 this is the moment. This are, is the you, are you all excited about the possibilities of, of flipping of, of, of some of the, the changes that could take place, especially within the United States Senate, within the uh, House of, uh, of Representatives? I certainly am because uh, my pastor is running for one of those. <laughs> That's my old church. And he is such an yes. artistic uh, public awesome. figure and been an activist from the day I met him. Mm-hmm. And I know that he will make a great senator. So yes, we are very excited about the changes that could happen. Happen, And Lucy Macbeth also in the state of Georgia. Yeah. We're working very hard to make sure that she get reelected as well. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are critical races. I I, I think that uh, you know, Georgia certainly is uh, in the in, in the eyes of of yes. about everyone. You know, we heard so, a lot of we had a lot of excitement in Georgia today because um, actor yeah. rapper Common was here and uh, he walked to the polls in Clayton County with Ossoff and Reverend Warnock. So that oh, was nice. Yes. That's yes. a great guy. Uh, that's a great uh, person to, to join you at the polls there and leave you with a little rap. In, in the- <laughs> <laughs> and I'm encouraged about Texas. My brother lives in San, San Antonio, so he keeps mm-hmm. me uh, up on what's happening. I mean, I, I would not have found him, uh, you know, four years ago of right. the, the idea of uh, a candidate going because it's a toss up in in, um, Texas. So I'm very encouraged, very encouraged. And it says something about, um, as they say, the soul of our country. You have to sit back and think, is this who we want to be? And so uh, Texas has been red for a long time. Not saying it's gonna flip, but it's encouraging. And I get daily texts from San Antonio. Well, I will send you text from Dallas Fort Worth because we are really excited <laughs> about the Y'all turn it out. Y'all turn uh, it out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, what about you, Melly Campbell? Are there any races that you're looking at? Uh well, you know, as we all speak nonpartisanly speaking, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> you know, twenty five years, no, you know, gotcha. know how to say in orange when I feel like wearing it, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, I think I think the power, you know, the, the re- reality that uh, we're at this crossroads in this nation, right? Either we go be a democracy as uh, as flawed as it is, or we're not, and we will be in a totalitarian state. Yeah, um, it's real. Um, you having and having one party control all elements of government mm-hmm. um, that is not for all the people is a problem. Um, and, his, and historically, we know and we see other countries, some of the things that are going on in our country, if it was happening somewhere else, we would be sanctioning them. It, it just wouldn't be happening. Exactly. Um, and, you know, and we know that uh, our lives are at stake in so many ways. Mm-hmm. When you have people showing up at polling places with guns, one mm-hmm. of the things that, uh, a lot of our organizations are doing, um, uh, we're not leading, but we're supporting and, and trying to help. I'll make sure our people on the ground are, are working on security issues at the polling places. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and, and, and this, it's just a whole lot. COVID, trying to leave your home, uh, trying to make sure that you're safe. You know, I, all my sisters here know I'm just, I'm still recovering. I'm doing really well. I'm recovering for something to hit me out of it. Hit me across my head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, wow. Okay. So I got a whole other perspective about what this really is and all of yeah. this happening. Um, and so many people, our people are dying from COVID nineteen mm-hmm. and then being yeah. shot on the street. We got a lot, but but we but we will, and we're going to overcome uh, this. But it's 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 going to be, and it won't be over on the third. 
Just exciting, Sybil, because when I think about the 95 million Americans that did not vote in 2016, mm -hmm. it's exciting seeing people wait in line. It's unfortunate yes. that Secretary of State's and election office had didn't prepare better. I yeah. uh, knew that people was going to come out and vote. And I'm just disappointed that people are still having to stand in lines for hours. To hours. Vote. But I'm encouraged because they're standing and yeah. they're not leaving. And they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And, and one of the things that uh, we're talking to people about here is about our plans that we're making on Election Day. Those of us that have already voted, uh, going out and encouraging the people that are in line with uh, whether we bring them, you know, juice, water, uh, whether we, you know, just keep the I conversation know. going and, and, and uh, you know, if it's too cold outside, you know, and, and as well as taking those souls to the polls if we can. Yeah, absolutely. And so oh. we're beginning to see that that kind of interaction already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people are handing out water and Absolutely. protein bars and um, yep. hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's encouraging and it's exciting because I am uh, hearing that we are already over the maximum amount of people that are voting early than in two thousand six. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They 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 suspect that by this weekend we'll have a hundred million. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Early voters from what I'm hearing today. Uh, so um, when Sisters United for Reform says know your rights and we are voting early, we're casting our ballots on, on Election Day. Um, what are our rights as we are going to do this? Um, and can you speak to that, President Harris, in terms of uh, with, if, they, if we go into a polling place and they say you don't have the right to do this, um, what do we say? How do we respond to this? Well, number one, we should ask to speak to some supervisor there in place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we should make sure that when we come, you know, when we find that people are interfering with someone's right to vote, you can call a number, and I think I had it here at one place, and report that it is illegal to intimidate voters. Mm -hmm. Federal crime to intimidate or threaten or coerce them, and, and people need to understand that. No one have a right to come to you when you're standing in line and ask you anything. So um, if the poll closes while you're standing in line, know that you have a right to stay there until you cast your ballot. Mm -hmm. if you make a mistake on your ballot, ask for a new one. If the machines are down at your polling place, ask for a paper ballot. Mm -hmm. If your name is not on the list, ask the poll workers to double check it and make sure that your name is listed with the poll workers. Um, there are supplementary, uh, supplementary voting ballots that you can get at that particular place. But if the poll worker cannot find your name and if, they mm -hmm. cannot, if you cannot travel to the correct polling place, you can ask for a provisional ballot. But uh, Sylvia, I'd like for your listeners to know that they can call this hotline if they run into problems, it's the election protection hotline at 1866 our vote mm -hmm. to locate their polling place or to report in, uh, intimidation. And they can also call the local election office. And I recommend that they get that information and have it with them before they are in line to vote. Uh, those offices may uh, should be open on election day. So somebody should be there answering the phone. So those are some of the things you can know when you're in line that no one have a right to come and ask you anything outside of the polling place. Those are not sanctioned people to do that. Mm -hmm. So we want your listeners to know and we want everyone to spread the word that do not allow anyone to intimidate, coerce you to walk away. And that's one eight six six our vote O U R V O T E our vote and yes. remind people and we will continue to remind folks of that uh, if you come across any problems when you are in the voting place uh, and would like some information or get some help um, I can't imagine. Uh, that you all are having to do a lot of work amongst your own members 
but what are each of your organizations doing to get that high voter turnout? Anything uh, uh, off the beaten path that you all have discovered is that secret sauce of, of sorts <laughs> to get people to, to vote? And we can start with you, President Harris. Well, you know, after we realized that in 2016, uh, 92 million people did not cast a, their ballot. Mm -hmm. So we started early in 2019 coming up with strategies on how to collaborate with other organizations, uh, how to get people registered early and making sure they understood that just registering is not enough. They have to cast their ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, working with high schools to get 16 and 17 year old pre-registered early uh, making, we work with, uh, contact the secretaries of state to make voting more convenient in different states. We have 61 chapters across 27 states. Mm. So we sent open letters to secretary of state asking them to make voting more convenient for, for people in their, in their communities. And we sent op open letters to school system asking that we restore, uh, and give people the opportunity to um, include civic education in the school system. We need to strengthen that and get it back into our school system so our kids understand civics and government and politics and how important it is to understand. And she's frozen a bit. Look, President Harris? Yes. Okay, you, you were frozen there just at the very end. Yeah, we need to make sure that um, people understand and exercise their right, right to vote. And it actually start at the local level. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. State and federal. And so sometime I think that, it, and I, uh, we all know that we are nonpartisan, but I think that sometimes we have to be careful because that's when the crazies get into yeah. these positions that are in Washington causing the trouble and we're having to deal with that right now. And that's yeah. because people don't vote during midterm season. So they under, need to understand it is important to vote every election. President Gaines Clark, do you have anything to add to uh, getting that high voter turnout? Uh, absolutely. Um, our organization um, has working through our personal um, social media, as well as we had one of our members who as a member of our Columbia, uh, South Carolina chapter that created a nonpartisan website called uh, vote, VotersOnTheFence.com. And so if there's still uh, any voter who is still not sure what they need to do or understand how to uh, register, how to find their uh, ballots, how to find, find the polling areas, they can go to that website. And the beauty about our coalition, many of uh, the Girl Girlfriends Incorporated members belong to other organizations mm -hmm. in the coalition. Mm -hmm. And so um, in speaking with uh, Sister President Beverly Smith and Sister President Kimberly uh, Jeffries, um, some of the things that they shared with me is Delta Sigma Theta has 3,000 volunteers who have confirmed that they're going to participate as uh, poll watchers and election judge. Mm, nice. 400 of the 3,000 are attorneys who are going to be assigned to virtual election protection hotlines uh, to support any of the voters if they have any reportable uh, encounters. And they're working on the lines, talking about the water, the snacks, the chairs for our elderly or any PEE that may be required. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incorporated. Uh, they are partnering with NAACP and when we all vote and uh, own network, as well as get out the vote uh, initiative. And they have over 3,300 links uh, sisters that are voting squad captains around the country, and they will be at the polls helping and assisting. So I'm just so thrilled and excited of what we're doing, not only internally, but also externally to support our communities in getting the vote out. Yeah, absolutely. And lastly, President Campbell, how about you? Uh, well, we're focusing in um, 12 states. Uh, all of our resources, most of our resources and funding uh, are in uh, uh, Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in Virginia and we're in the South, but we know that things can change. 
And so we're in Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi, Louisiana, North Carolina, and 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 some supports and supporting other organizations. We raised money um, to support some of our partner organizations this time, which I was glad to do. Because a lot of times our organizations don't have the resources. We want everybody to do everything for free. And in in <laughs> so we were really uh, glad to be able to find support for those. We're focusing uh, on uh, everything that you can think of when it comes to turnout. Um, yeah. So from traditional, get out the vote, voter registration, education, GOTV, doing the research of the kinds of things I talked about with Essence. But also earlier on, we and we do this every presidential election, we sent a questionnaire to all of the candidates, including the current occupant of the White House, mm -hmm. who didn't respond in 16, for 16 and didn't respond in 20, but we sent it because that's what we're supposed to do. That's so right. we have a record what folks said they were mm -hmm. going to do. Even mm -hmm. if they made some some small adjustments along the way in the campaign, we have on record. So on when depending on uh, if there's a shift in power, we can sit down and have a conversation about what you said you were going to do versus what you're going to do. And mm -hmm. so just trying to have ways to have uh, accountability measures for whoever's elected and really educating our people to be prepared because of COVID. We had. A, a lot of social media, media things that I never thought I would be involved in. <laughs> All of us having to adjust to the reality, but still doing traditional uh, contactless uh, um, uh, door knocking and canvassing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. car parades and parties at the polls and all we need to do this week, this last push for us is really continue to in, uh, make sure our people know how to protect our vote because we, we yeah. feel that there's things that can happen as people go through early voting and election day and we want to be prepared, uh, working to deal with de-escalation. A lot of our organizations, the NACP and others are having trainings to do de mm -hmm. de-escalation um, because the last thing I want to say is 2000 was 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was in South Florida uh, they, they, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other civil rights organizations and kind of newbie on the block, but we can remember just how important it is to be yeah. able to have counter folks with folks want to challenge the count, right? Mm -hmm. so part of what we're really focusing on is if the folks want to challenge that, tap, challenge the count because then they don't get what they want. Mm -hmm. So close to call, we don't want to see Florida happening in multiple right. states. Right. Of yeah. That's yeah. part of it. And, and that's not something to go details about because some things you'll need, the enemy don't need to know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 the, and the chats may not be hanging this year, but it's going to be not be hanging. <laughs> we have, we have to be vocal to have the votes counted is those who will be in there trying to stop it, stop the counts. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Melly Campbell, have you voted yet? No, I'm voting on election day. Okay. So I think uh, my my uh, now nine and eight year old. I have great niece and nephew uh, that lives with us. And my father, and my nephew, and we take the kids and let them go vote. So we're gonna vote uh, at my precinct on Tuesday. That's we're nice. gonna get up real early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to beat the crowd. Exactly. Exactly. And, and what about you, President Harris? Have you voted yet? Yes, early voting started October 12th here in the state of Georgia. So I was there in line on the 12th and I voted early so that I can be available to assist in any other way I can. And we have been doing that throughout the rest of this year. We are going to be hitting the ground pretty hard these next few days. But my final appeal, civil, and we'd like to personally thank you for having uh, United for Reform to be with you for the last four weeks. We thank, thank you, you for this opportunity and this platform and this engagement. But my final appeal is to make sure that we continue to work together with other organizations mm -hmm. to get people to the polls to vote. This is critical and we must vote like our lives depend on it because it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, finally, uh, let's go to you, President uh, Clark, and, and ask you, have you voted? Uh, yes, I have. And I have my little sticker on. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> okay, I can see it. Before. <laughs> and uh, in the state of New Jersey, our ballots were mailed uh, October 1st. 
And um, uh, my husband and I both went to uh, the Board of Elections and hand delivered it and took pictures. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just to have an archive. And uh, I am happy to say, in the state of New Jersey, the where our, our laws are. Um, even though uh, your ballot may arrive after the third, if it's postmarked on November 3rd, we are allowing it here in the state of New Jersey up through the 10th of November oh. for your ballot to arrive. And that is such a helpful um, uh, support for, for the mail system that we have now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm excited. And now, you know, I'm still making sure I'm getting those uh, 18 to 29 year old out there, you know, yeah. they see yeah. me coming and they say, oh, this is Miss Margaret again. I know what she's going to ask. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, if I can just say one thing about, uh, you know, my last appeal to um, your listening audience, and I, I'm certainly not the uh, author of this. One of our uh, members from our uh, Birmingham chapter had posted this on our Facebook, and mm -hmm. it said, a vote is not a valentine. Mm -hmm. You're not confessing your love mm -hmm. for the candidate. It's a chess move mm -hmm. for the world you want to live in. Amen. So if you don't like the world that you're living in, it's a chess move. Do what you have to do to make it right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And and and, and I just want to say uh, that uh, I did vote, and I was going to ask you, President Harris, uh, how long was your wait? Because I I voted early too, and three and a half hours. Yeah, but yeah. there was just such a lively conversation in the line, and so much energy. Mm. You know, uh, as we close, I just wanted to share something and a conversation, a couple of conversations. I, I've lost uh, a couple of relatives recently, an uncle and, and an aunt. And as a part of the conversation, uh, as we talked about their passing, everybody was asking to a person, did he vote early? Did she vote before? Mm -hmm. Before, And so it, it really does behoove us to, to get out there as early as possible uh, to make this happen. And uh, because, uh, you know, even though they left us, uh, they that these two wanted to make sure that their votes were counted and they went ahead and did that. And these are folks that were in their 80s and 90s. And so it's, it's really something to think about and to share with our young people about the, the value and the importance of their action uh, in this because we're leaving this to them. And right. so we, we are. <laughs> they have the, and they have the votes, the young, uh, mm -hmm. you know, young people, right. they brought, if they bring that collective power, it's in mm -hmm. there, it really is in their hands. Yeah, it so, really is. Um, and just as we close out, is there, are there any final words? I just wanna, um, cause I really wanna thank you all so much for your time and, and for the conversation. Uh, but I, if any of you are just want to leave us. The, the, the only thing I would say to folks that haven't voted, as you said, and if you plan to vote, either early vote if you still have the opportunity or vote on election day. I'm just, I love vote, doing election day. I always come back home yeah. just to vote on election day. Uh, be safe, wear a mask, be prepared, uh, bring, bring water, uh, you know, bring, bring some music, have a good time. Uh, have a good time and, and know that uh, that'll make a difference. And then uh, uh, bring a folding chair. Just in case. That's right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. We just need to remind everybody that a no vote is a vote. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And don't allow anything to rob you of that right. And it is a right. Uh, and if you don't go out as uh, Sister uh, President Virginia and Sister President Melanie have said, you have given up that right. That's right. And we know it's important because the voter suppression is 20 fold. So mm -hmm. that's right there. That's it. That's it. I want to thank you all uh, for joining us. Uh, once again, thanks to uh, Cheryl Proctor Rogers uh, for helping us uh, pull all of this together over the last four weeks and for her uh, invaluable contribution to all of this. Um, and so uh, just uh, 
as we close out, uh, just to thank all of the women that were here with us in October, uh, Sharon Beard, National President of Top Ladies of Distinction, Rashida Liberty, the International President of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. And of course, uh, she is returning with us, uh, but she was with us during the second week. Uh, and that is uh, President of the National, of the National President of the Girlfriends, Margaret Gaines Clark, Dr. Glenda Glover, the International President of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Guinevere Hess, the President of Black Women's Agenda, Dr. Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, National President of the Lynx, Beverly Evans Smith, and National President and CEO of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. And uh, last week, Dr. Jeanette Cole, National Chair and President of the National Council of Negro Women, Cornisha McGill Brown, National President of Jack and Jill of America, Valerie Hollingsworth Baker, the International President of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and of course, uh, President Virginia Harris, uh, National President of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, and our friend Melanie Campbell, President and CEO of the Black Women's Roundtable. Thank you so much. I can't thank you all for supporting us. Um, we appreciate all of the support that we have gotten from Sisters United for Reform. Uh, we ask that, uh, that that you know that the door is always open. And if you would like to join us and, and, and to have some more spirited and informative conversations. And also um, ask that you uh, tell your friends and your family about the What You Need to Know newsletter. And if I might ask all of those who are watching now to please go to SybilWilks.com. That's Sybil like the crazy girl, Wilkes like John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> and give us that, that's the name of my mom and daddy gave us. Um, <laughs> give us your name and your email address, and uh, it is a free subscription. So, uh, as you are taking folks to the polls, you might want to just uh, get their name and email address and, and sign them up for the newsletter, too. We're doing this on our own, folks. It's just uh, four black women and one solid brother putting us all together every day with our newsletter. And so, we would appreciate your uh, supporting us with your subscriptions. And as I said, it is free. Go to civilwilks.com. Uh, we will be back here tomorrow. It is Wednesday. And uh, Stephen Hill and Myra J will be with us. And uh, once again, we thank you. Don't forget, as Melanie has said, wash, get, get your uh, mask. Make sure that you have uh, all of your, your hands are clean and that you have the all of the instruments that are, are used for this to go out there and vote. Wear your comfortable shoes, as the first lady said. Get your chair, everything else that you need. And, and take a friend with you. It's always good to have company. Or 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 the young people in your family, your eight to nine-year-olds. Take them with you so they can get used to this and be a part of the process as well. Thank you all so much. Once again, we will, uh, we will absolutely look forward to the next opportunity we have to talk to all of you. I am Sabrina, and we are uh, on our way to the next. Thank you so much. Be Thank careful. You. Thanks, ladies. I appreciate you.